from WBBZ TV Sports. It's time to beat the champ. Now, here are your hosts, Paul Peck and Sue Nowitzki. With Sue and Janelle, I'm Paul Peck, and welcome to Beat the Champ. It's week two at Manor Lanes 2 here in Amherst. And boy, after week one and the perfect game that we saw from Mike D'Amico, what could we possibly expect this week? Well, you know, Mike Mowitz is on the show, so we can expect almost anything. Good point. However, there's a rich community of stories going on here, and I'm going to fill you in as the show goes on, but we've got a lot in the background going on. Can't wait. We've got some great bowlers. John Massiello returns as our winner from last week. Sue mentioned Mike Mowitz. It's Mike Zarcone, one of the best will be here. So will Andy Reddick. And I know when Mike Malwitz is on our show, you are always on high alert, Janelle. Yes, you never know what's going to happen with him. It's always something wacky and crazy. So let's see what he has in store for us today. So we don't exactly know how we're going to define unpredictable on this <laughs> week's show, but you better stick around and find out. Let's get rolling. Week two at Manor 2. We're going to see a familiar face in Mike Malwitz. 300's out of the way, so you can't do that. What can we expect from you this week? Are you saying I can't shoot a 300 right now? I'm saying you can't shoot the first 300. Uh, However, I know you have surprises up your sleeve. We would expect nothing less. Well, I can't wait to go against my ex-partner, Maz, uh, because he dumped me, as I said uh, last year, in uh, the national tournament. But I look forward to it. It should be a great match. Let's have some fun. Okay, I think we can expect some fun. Good luck today. Thanks. Good way to get things started here at Manor Lanes, too. Mike Malwitz versus John Massiello in a good match of veteran Western New York bowlers here uh, as part of a good veteran lineup of bowlers that we have here on this show this week. So all of uh, our four bowlers are all guys who have been pretty consistent beat the champ bowlers and pretty long-term successful Western New Yorkers. And then you throw the always entertaining personality of Mike Malwitz <laughs> in the mix here. Yeah. Absolutely. This Look. is Mike's fifth appearance on Beat the Champ. Great shot. Kind that, of died at the end there. Well, no, this is telling me that these, we talked about the characteristics of the lane and how the wood will break down faster. That was simply a case of, you know, that would have been a great shot. Um, and it changes so quickly that this is what you're going to see as these lanes break down. You don't get a subtle change, you get a big change. So a rather challenging split to pull off here, and Mike at least gets two. So it's an open frame with nine pins to start for Mike Mollitz. And now we get our first look at John Massiello, our returning champion from a week ago, thanks to his victory over Curtis Foss uh, that came right down to the final 10th frame. And the KG veteran Massiello was able to come up with a double uh, in order to clinch the win. So for John, this is his fifth appearance on Beat the Champ. Overall record for John, three wins and two losses. That was his second weekly win, but that win a week ago was his first weekly win since way back in early 2016. You know, John's become very, very, very modest as, as you know, time has gone on when we talk to him. He's, um, he's self-deprecating. He gives a lot of credit to the young people and he knows that's important to the sport. But make no mistake, he's a great bowler. And as we've seen these last two shots here. 61 years old from the city of Buffalo. And now we head back to the 37-year-old Mike Malwitz from Grand Island. Let's also say that as entertaining as Mike is, his, his chirping does motivate his opponents. Yes. Because we've seen him on the show a lot, but he hasn't won nope. as much as he should. One win, four losses. Uh, in his previous appearances here. So, yeah, I, I, you know, and, and Mike's a terrific bowler, obviously, from a very Great prominent bowler. Western New York bowling family. Mike's been very successful, and, and, and again, we love Mike because he brings a different <laughs> flair to the show, which is great. But, yeah, I, I think he would probably tell you he's trying to figure out why he has struggled a bit on this show and would like to put that to an end. But I think he does not be as much of a distraction as he is a motivator to his opponents. Great shot. Good. It's two strikes in a row Where am I going? for Mike Marlins. Come on. <laughs> 
<laughs> we, yeah, we love Mike. <laughs> Mike brings, Mike makes this show ten times more entertaining. We like to think we make it entertaining along with the bowlers. Mike. No, can, I think we take Mike a back kicks seat that up when a notch. he's on. Mike, yeah, Mike's like drinking a case full of Red Bull <laughs> on this show. <laughs> you kept that. You kept that clean and used Red Bull. I see. <laughs> we'll work on that Great sponsorship job. agreement. Three so, straight strikes for John to start things off. So, so I mentioned there was some underlying stories. I mean, these Western New York bowlers have known each other for a very long time and have rich histories. And apparently, there was a history between John and Mike where they were doubles partners. And uh, I guess John chose to go in a different direction. So when you hear Mike call him partner, he's actually uh, uh, chiding him a bit. Uh huh. It's a little of the game within the game here. There you go. Perfect start for John Masiello. Screen four, and he could not get that seven pin to go down. Well, in reality, that was quite right of his target, and uh, he didn't mean to get it that far past his, he got it a little right of his break point, and it did turn back up and hit the pocket, so I'm sure he's happy to see that, but um, should be a fairly routine spare. Mentioned John's from the city of Buffalo. A city marshal uh, is his occupation. 61 years old, been bowling uh, for well over 40 years, and very at a very high level. And again, one of the more prominent bowlers here in Western New York, uh, over a 220 average in many individual and team titles throughout the outstanding career of John Massiello. Not to mention the brother of our once mayor. Well, there you go. That would. Uh, that would make him a little more prominent as well, too. And Tony Masiello's brother's an, a great guy and one heck of a college basketball player at Canisius, along with being a good mayor. And there's three in a row for Mike Malwitz, who's part of the family empire there on Grand <laughs> Island at, Ma at Malwitz's Island Lanes. That is his full-time occupation in running things there. And there you get a look at Janelle Saban on the Castellone Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram scoreboard showing the early results from this one between John and Mike. Mike coming off a good performance a couple weeks ago in Oswego, finishing third at the Super Bud Bowl out of 1,200 Yeah, that's, that's, that is a great I, finish. This feels like a good time to take a short break. We'll be right back with more action on Beat the Champ. Welcome back to Beat the Champ. Let's get back to the action here on WBBZ TV. Well, Mike was our top qualifier this week, so Mike got to actually take home a TV from Dirt Cheap TVs. How excited are you, Mike? Uh, pretty awesomely excited. Obviously. Obviously. Yeah. <laughs> so what's the first thing you're gonna watch with your new TV? Uh, Beat the Champ on WBBZ. Hello. <laughs> well, awesome, Mike. We're really happy you're here again today, and thank you so much. Oh, I can't wait, Janelle. Oh, God. <laughs> Very deliberate and pacing of John Massiello on his approach. And Great he shot. gets that ring 10 to go down, and it's a third strike in a row for John Massiello. I mean, it's an 11 pin match with the advantage going to Mike, but, you know, every time he posts a strike, he's got to match him or. And Mike just said it right. He's Mike, uh, John Masiello is not making it easy on Mike and nor would Mike expect that to happen. You get a look at where the scores are at. Mike has run six strikes in a row here. Leave it to Mike to not to find his actual average, but to put 230 something. <laughs> Can he get lucky seven? No. And that evens this match right up. Well, he probably bowls five times a week. He's probably 232, 233, 234, 235. He's probably 230-something each Teach day. Teach him a week. little math and tell him to average it out for next time, all right? So here's Mike looking to spare here in the eighth frame. Very tight, close match. There's your spare. Wow. 
have not seen Mike uh, since he was one of Tyler Molina's victims up at the Kearns Avenue Bowling Center back in uh, February earlier this year. So one, one of those six match winning streaks for Tyler Molina came at the, uh, came at the expense of Mike Malwitz. And then later this year, we'll go back to Mike's home base up at his, Malwitz's Family Island Lanes in Grand Island. Always a fun time. These nice, these bowling centers are so community oriented and so um, well received by, you know, their neighborhoods. It's just, it's fun to come here to these, these um, smaller centers that really embrace their neighborhoods. Contemplation time here for John. Watch the focus, look at the intensity. Got it. You can see that locked in look on John's face. I didn't, I didn't want to talk while he was, while he was going. This was a, a big shot for him as he can shut Mike out. So if he, he doubles here and gets good count, he can actually shut Mike out, which I'm sure is his intention. So flip it over to lane five now, 10th frame for John Massiello with a chance to win this match. Good shot. Ooh, just didn't get enough pin action to come slide Actually, over. Actually, that was a great shot. That was just was a little high flush and just went through the, the pocket and just missed the nine pin, but or, by all accounts, couldn't have thrown it any better. So John completes the spare. And he'll have one more roll here in the 10th frame to post the final score. We are still tight in this one. Door's going to still be open for it Mike is, here in the it 10th is, frame. It is, but count here is extremely important. He really needs all 10 to force to force Mike to double. Oh, and he got it. Big strike for John Massiello. Looking to win two in a row, doing what he needs to do to make it happen. 247 as the scores continue to be impressive and outstanding here at Manor Lanes 2. So 10th frame now, Mike Malwitz. What does he need? So the situation is he needs the first strike no matter what. A double will, will be a winner for him. Strike nine spare, we have the possibility of a tie. Anything less than a nine, John will win. But this strike is most important. Gotta have it. Doesn't get it. Seven pin would not go down. Not enough pin action to knock it down. So it's going to give John Massiello a second consecutive victory. And it's going to set up our next match, which is a battle of guys who probably bowled against each other about a thousand times in their careers, which is <laughs> John Massiello and Mike Zarcone. A little disappointing for Mike Malwitz as he could not do what he needed to do there in the 10th frame and um, you know Mike continues to struggle a little bit on this show and and uh, you know and I'll ask him about it and I'm sure he'll have a good explanation for it as well too but um, he, he hasn't found his groove yet I know, on he show. likes show. He likes to keep everything upbeat and keep um, you know try to have a little fun on the show but you got to know your opponent and you're bowling against a, a guy who knows how to win and has seen a lot of things so who might who feeds off that a little bit as well yeah. too so we talked about that and it may very well be true yeah so it's a narrow 247 to 238 win for john Massiel over mike malwitz john will advance on that's two in a row for him we'll talk to mike and preview our next match when sue and i return it's beat the champ at manor lanes two
Well, it's a narrow loss for Mike Malwitz here to John Massiello. And as much fun as I know that you have on this show, I think you tell me you have a little more fun when you can figure out how to win a few of these matches. Yeah, I know. I, I just seem like a professional losing on Beat the Champ. <laughs> I don't know why. I've got a couple wins, but overall, it's it's a matter about the fun. That's what, what bowling is all about. That's why we do it. So I want to tell all the kids out there, when you lose, when you bowl bad, it's okay. Everything's good. You're just having fun. Absolutely. Right? Nothing, right. And even more fun when Jim gets to hand you a check. Yeah. Well, yeah. Mike, here you go. I, I, it's like I claim his, him as a dependent. <laughs> anyway, uh, Mike epitomizes what bowling's all about, the aspect of having a good time, having fun, and when you lose, the sun will come out tomorrow. Yes, it will. It yeah. will. And, and again, we love having you around, Mike, and you, you bring a, a, a certain energy to the show that we do enjoy and appreciate. It's always a pleasure to be on, and Janelle? I'll see you next month. Yeah, you were you were rather kind and nice to Janelle, so we thank you for that as well too. So, all right, Janelle's got more work. We've got more work. We got another good match coming up. We'll get you ready for that one when we return on Beat the Champ. I'm with Mike Sarcone, a very familiar face here on Beat the Champ. Your streak was not beat by Tyler Molino. I'm sure you were worried about that. Um, what's your plan for today? Well, I better have my striking shoes on because uh, there are going to be a lot of strikes today, high scores. How was qualifying here? Uh, they were, you know, I don't want to say easy, but they're a lot of striking. Uh, scores were pretty high, so hopefully we can keep going. Well, the lights and the cameras and the uh, lanes breaking down a little bit and all the bowlers are going to make a difference today, but I know you're up to the task, so good luck today. Absolutely. Thank you. We got about 80 years of bowling experience in our next match as John Massiello takes on the challenger, Mike Zarcone, one of our most successful Beat the Champ bowlers. We missed Mike over the last couple of months, but good to have him back. And uh, these are two of the most prominent and long time successful bowlers in Western New York. So this should be a good one. This could be the start of any tournament in Western New York, right? It's true, right? I mean, these how two up times, against each other. I, I wonder how many times these two guys have bowled against each other. Probably, Hundreds of them, if not more. Probably a few. We were talking a little bit earlier, and in 2005, they were neck and neck for high average in one of the leagues they bowled. 245. Wow. Mike edged him out by, Mike edged John out by 10 pins for 245 average. Wow, that's, amazing. That is that is an amazing number. A little hiccup there for John, uh, for Mike Zarcone as he misses that spare pin in the first frame. So it's an early open for Zarcone. And now John Massiello, who has won two in a row, including the last match over Mike Malwitz, will look to make it three straight. And here we go for John. And a Great good shot. way to get it started with a strike. Well, this is an interesting, you know, we'll talk about this the whole month while we're here at Manor 2, and that's how the lanes are going to change, being um, wood surface and a lot of right-handers. You know, we got Andy Reddick coming up next match, who's one of the, the first left-handers since Tyler Molina. Mm -hmm. And um, these guys have been wearing down the lane, and if you'll see that Mike kind of got the ball very far to the right because he relies on a real big loop in the back. Mm -hmm. So that can sometimes leave funny spares. Well, it's been a nice little run from John Massiello. He's won his last two matches, putting up a 256 and a 247. So uh, he's kind of feeling it right now, and he's certainly bowling like that. And obviously, we know what Mike Zarcone can do. This is his 12th different appearance here on Beat the Champ, which ties Tony Dolan for the most Beat the Champ show appearances. His 12 wins are tied with Tyler Molina for the most wins on Beat the Champ. Well, as you can see, again, on this one, his target is way to the right of John. But as these lanes have gone on, John has the advantage of knowing that five hooks a little bit more, and the dry is a little bit drier in lane five. So how Mike adjusts to this is going to be interesting because John has chosen to keep the ball in. He's playing more inside of closer to, you know, right around third arrow, between third and fourth arrow. And, you know, Mike's kind of using the, the dry. 
Well, aside from utilizing the parts of the lane that you that suit your game the best, mm -hmm. is this an example where one of these guys might adjust a little bit to stay away from where the other one is, or to kind of counterbalance what the other one's doing? Uh, no, no, not in this case. They're really just gonna play their own game because their games are a, a bit different, and they're gonna try to you know make what's going on in the lane work for their particular style but John has had the advantage of seeing these lanes break down where Mike's coming onto them new and um, he's got to figure them out for himself. So Zarcone has started open strike spare. Massiello has had strikes in his first two frames. Bowling frame number three here. Second match of the day. It is week two of Beat the Champs trip to Manor Lanes 2 in Amherst. And the late fall from the seven pin gives us a third consecutive strike. That was a little bit inside for him. There's a lot of oil inside on lane six, so that held off a little bit longer, but light hits are good carry, sometimes tend to carry very well. Got that seven pin out. You gotta look at the Castellone Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram scoreboard. I want you to watch and observe the focus and determination of John Massiello on every throw. And also watch where his ball rolls over. He's looking at the straight over third arrow. And he's got his perfect spot there because it's got a good hold, hold to his left. Ball sits up. Great optimum strike situation. Now you watch Mike. Mike's, Mike's target is much more to the right. And certainly a contrast in ball action down the lanes. As you mentioned, Mike tends to throw with a much bigger hook than a lot, not only a lot of the bowlers, certainly more than John does. He's got his own particular style that you know, it's been very conducive to striking over the years. He's got a tremendous amount of 300s. Yep, like 2000, right. 98 uh, yeah. of them to be exact. Yeah, how about that? 98 of them. Wow. Uh, pretty pretty impressive. Uh, 2014 Open Hour Masters champ, 2016 New York State All Events champ is Mike Sarcone. Uh, entered the Greater Buffalo USBC Hall of Fame in 2016 and a six-time Buffalo Bowler of the Year. Doesn't get any more impressive of a resume. We're going to be back with more Beat the Champ bowling action in just a minute. Welcome back to Beat the Champ. Let's get back to the action here on WBBZ TV. So that strike was good for John because it, to keep this match close is reliant that Mike keeps on striking. Again, because of that miss in the, in the front. Yes. When he starts striking, boy. Yep, we've seen that before. If you've, if you've watched this show, you know when Mike gets on a roll, he is hard to stop. And uh, that's why he is tied for the most consecutive wins on Beat the Champ at six with Tyler Molina and Matt White. That's our longest win streak so far on the show. And as I mentioned, his 12 wins are tied for the most. So a win in this match would move Mike Zarcone to the top of that list. Matter of fact, that the uh, Matt White's not here as far as the win streak, but the other guy as a part of that win streak and the overall wins, Tyler Molina, still here at Manor Lanes, too, after losing in our first match of the tournament a week ago, a victim of the 300 game by Mike D'Amico. Yeah, I'm sure he'd love to get back out, but... Not gotta wait till next gotta week. Wait gotta till wait till next month. Next month at Matt Brad Angelo. Of Lane. which qualifying is going on this weekend, as you mentioned. Seventh frame strike for John Massiello. And boy, these two guys are knocking pins down all over Matter Lanes too. Well, that secures John's 20 pin lead. He needed to start posting up a couple strikes, and he did. So 20 pins ahead here, so halfway through. Strikes in the first four, spare. Strikes in the last two for the man they call Maz.
you know, and I think one of the things that you and I spend a lot of time talking about are the contrasting styles that we see on the show. Another nice strike for John, you know, particularly when we get some of the young guns in here that are that are high backswing, high rev rate, powering their way through, uh, and then you get a crafty vet like John Massiello who does it with skill and technique well, and is, intricacy. That's the great thing about this sport, and we talk about 8 to 80, anybody can do it, but even at a level between the bowling, you just have to know how to buy your equipment, how to use it towards your game. Uh, that, he got that one that way hit was a right. little bit to the light, to the right, and it would not bring the 10 pin down. So well, that's just it. You create such big angles. He's creating such a big angle. And look how far John's to the left he lined. You know, Mike is lining up here as well yeah. too. Sometimes when you're using, when you create that angle, the ball comes in behind the head pin and leaves 10 pins. When you're a lot of time, it's angle. With John's playing it a lot more high, a lot more high flush. He's going for the high flush hit mm -hmm. as opposed to opening it up and you know, kind of open himself up to that that ten pin. So it, it looks close as you look at the numbers on the Castellone scoreboard, but it's not really that close because of the strike run that John is on, and uh, he is getting close to knocking this one out of the park and finishing this one off and. Ooh. Shots with pins hung up like that from Mike Zarcone are going to make that a little easier to happen. There's a thing we call over under in bowling, and that's when there's a lot of dry to the right and a lot of oil to the left. And those are, you know, you want dry to your right and you want oil to your left, but not extreme um, amounts of it. So I think that's kind of what we're seeing play You're out here. You're sensing that right now? Yeah. The, the, the dry is getting very dry and the oil is still quite tight, so that's where you're seeing. Um, it's a little harder to play that. And we're only halfway through our competition here at Matter Lanes, too, so there's going to be some challenges well, for the rest match, of the bowlers. We'll take on a left hander, and the left hander is going to have a different situation, so it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Another big strike, four in a row for John Massiello on his way to his third consecutive victory. Well, yeah, so there's your setup for our next match with Andy Reddig facing either of these two guys, but being able to utilize an area of the lanes that hasn't been touched since Tyler Molina in our first match. Well, John has uh, secured his position in this match, so it will be John. There was a little uh, backstory between Mike and Andy. They were one and one as far as beating, you know, winning on beating the champ. Andy won once over Mike, and Mike won once, and they were going to have a tiebreaker here, but we're not going to see it till nope. the next time. So this has been a nice run here for John Massiello, who coming in had not had an overt amount of success here on the show, um, had not been able to put a lot of wins together, but he's working a three in a row streak right now and headed towards that third consecutive win here with a chance to claim yet another weekly victory if he can win the next match against Andy Reddick. So John being secure in his win took out a different ball to see what would happen there and he saw that that ball um, snapped up pretty hard in the back end so we may not see that ball again. <laughs> That's uh, that's that's a great that's a great way to go about it, right? I know I got my win. Let me see what other things w might work for me because I may need them in my next match. Exactly. And then that ball wound up right back in the bag. If, if <laughs> you couldn't see it, but I could. John took that ball and put it right back in the bag. Never to be seen yeah, again. <laughs> what you don't what you don't want to do on this over under condition is exaggerate either. So a ball like that, he took out a pro ice, a shinier ball, and that will make, that will exaggerate the dry. So what you kind of want is a, a stronger ball to ride the oil line. That's kind of going to be the goal. Right. 263 is two to 203 is our final score in this one as you get a look at the scoreboard. It's John Massiello with a win over Mike Zarcone. Third in a row for Massiello. He's got one more to come. We'll talk to Mike Zarcone and get you ready for our final match of the day. It's Beat the Champ at Manor Lanes 2 in Amherst. Back right after this. Well, Mike Zarcone, you said to me you just weren't feeling it today, which is, again, one of the sort of oddities of this sport is sometimes you're feeling it and sometimes you're not. Yeah, I wasn't, uh, wasn't feeling it today, but 
we'll be back. Yeah, that, that, that open frame when you missed the spare in the first frame, it, how do you avoid that, or maybe in this case, maybe you didn't, of it sort of letting it affect the rest of it? Well, you need to strike, and when you don't strike and you're bowling against one of the best, it's pretty tough to make it up. Yeah, well, it was a it was a, a matchup of champions. How many times have you bowled against John in your life? Uh, I can't even count. Yeah, <laughs> kind of figured that. Well, Jim, make him feel a little better. All right. Yeah. Well, you can add this to all the thousands and thousands yeah, yeah. upon dollars that you've made on the show. Right, right. And uh, hopefully we'll see you next month. Yeah, well, hopefully. Mike is still one of our most successful and winningest bowlers here on Beat the Champ, and pretty sure we'll get a chance to see him soon enough to try to add to that total. But we got one more match. John Massiello try to keep that winning streak. Streak Alive, we're back right after this. Hi, I'm here with Andy Reddick. This looks like it's going to be a day of revenge because you were beat by Mike Sarcon the last time you were on Beat the Champ. So what's your plan today? I uh, just hopefully strike more than he does. Yeah. Well, here was one and one, so this is actually a tiebreaker, right? Um, if we face each other, it will be. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Okay, well, only lefty out here today, so the lanes have been changing on the right, so you know maybe that can work to your advantage. Yeah, I hope so. Just kind of stay in the same place I was in for uh, qualifying, and uh, nobody in my way. So. All right. So your job's to knock down a lot of pins today. Good luck to you. Thank you. Well, John Massiello will try to keep his win streak alive, and the man who will try to end that streak is the lefty, Andy Reddig, another one of uh, veteran Beat the Champ bowlers. This is Andy's fourth appearance here on the show. Three wins and two losses. We have not seen Andy since late in 2016 when he bowled at Grand Island, so it's good to have him back on the show. And, and as you mentioned in our last match, there's a... The interesting setup here is he's over on the left sides of the lane, which we haven't had since our first match of the day. Yeah, but if I remember correctly, five still was snapping up a little bit more. It seems to be, that seems to be equal on the right-hand side and left-hand side, but much less play, obviously, on the left-hand side. And John Massiello, as I mentioned, has won three in a row now. Nice little run for him, upping his overall Beat the Champ record to five wins and just two losses. And John has done it with some impressive scores. You know, when I tell you he's gone 256, 247, 263, uh, that's pretty good stuff. Another great shot. Even if the lanes are being forgiving, those are still pretty good scores as well, too. Nice. So we're happy to welcome in a special guest here as we uh, wrap up our second week here at Manor Lanes 2. We welcome in Karen Bariza, the director of the Tonawanda's USBC. We're up in your neck of the woods here now, yes, Karen. You are. Thank so you and welcome. Thanks for having, thanks for being a part of the show and uh, tell us a little bit about what's, uh, what's going on up here in the Tonawanda's. Well, right now, the Tonawanda's USBC is helping to host the uh, New York State Women's Bowling Tournament. That's all over at Tonawanda Bowling Center. We're getting ready to host our own lo local city tournament and our local eliminator tournament for our classic bowlers in the area. So we have a lot going on over the next few weeks. We know uh, we know how important uh, the community is for, particularly the community of the Tonawanda's. You rattled off some of the some of the prominent places that we've been here with the show, mm -hmm. and constantly, uh, you know, there's always a pretty steady stream of your bowlers that make their way through this show. So, uh, you know, a lot of uh, you know, I know you've been doing a lot of good work up in this area, yes. along with everybody, the Buffalo Group, and everybody else here in Western. Oh yes, York. we're always here to help out with the uh, local proprietors and everything. The uh, the local associations are always here to help out, help out our bowlers, do whatever we can to make it an enjoyable experience for them. Karen, how long have you been involved in the Tonawanda Tonawanda Association? Oh, um, I started out with the Twin City Women's uh -huh. Bowling Association, which was the uh, before the merger of the USBC, and I had to have been involved there for probably, oh, I don't even know, maybe 15, 20 years. Sue Leffler got me in as a director there. And then when we merged with the TBA or the Tonawanda Bowling Association, the Men's Association, I was um, the initial president of the association for the first six years and have been involved now as a director for the next six years. So I've been around for quite a bit. I know in my history that I've always known you to be, um, you know, involved in the association and a go-to person. Thank you. 
Good strike here for Andy Reddig. So two strikes in the first two frames for the lefty from Hamburg. As you get a look at the Castellone Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram scoreboards, John Massiello strike spare to begin with here. And again, Andy Reddick trying to put some pressure on and end John's streak. Andy uh, employed by the Department of Homeland Security. I mentioned he comes from Hamburg, 45 years old, uh, has been bowling since he's five years old, and the lefty has a healthy 230 average. And he'll step away. Which would Janelle distracted him over there a little bit, I think. <laughs> Karen, other than, you know, organizing the tournaments, and I know those are big parts of it, t tell me a little bit about what your group is doing to, to help grow the sport uh, in an area where it, it's already growing very well and is certainly very tuned into yeah. to bowling. Yes, we, um, over the past few years, we've also offered bowling clinics for some of the local bowlers who want to come out. Um, Jack Jurek has helped us out a lot over at Classic Lanes, where we've offered to have uh, him host some little clinics for bowlers to come out we've done that um, we offer a lot of tournaments and um, and also scholarships for our youth bowlers trying to get them involved with the mm -hmm. sport so we try to offer a lot to get the kids involved and get them up and bowling so how do people um, find out what's going on is there a way that um, viewers could if they're interested could get more information now, unfortunately with the um, demise of the Spares and Strikes magazine that used to be out all the time. We do have a Facebook page. We have a Facebook page for our youth bowlers also. And um, we have our website out there, tonusbc.com. So we try to keep up with all the tournaments and everything that we have going, our events, like we do uh, Bowl for the Cure for um, breast cancer research. So we do. When will um, that take place? That we already have for this year. Uh, John. Light. What? Light. There was a lot of there was a lot of pins flopping around yeah, on there well, for John. He just couldn't yeah. get the he almost yeah, pulled well, off the, the oddest looking strike we've seen yeah. in a long time. Well, one thing we've noticed is that they're a little wet dry, so yeah. if you keep it in a little bit, it almost can back away from the head. His pin. last shot on that was so good. I mean, he left that stone eight pin, and yeah. then with this shot, a little light. Fives become a little bit. That seems to be the tricky lane. Yeah, it's always one. Isn't it? They only played the same, right? Yes. <laughs> they never do. They never Very do. rarely. But John knows how to handle it. Karen, tell everybody a little bit about, you know, I mean, we hear about the Tonawanda USBC and the way that you work in conjunction with the Buffalo Group and all the other groups around Western New York, because even though you may be your own group in your area, I know that, that, that the effort goes throughout our, our, our region. That is correct. And there are a few tournaments out there that we work with the um, other local associations. We have our, what we now call our Western New York Queens event. Um, scratch event for all the ladies out there. That is hosted by us, by the Greater Buffalo, by Niagara Falls. We've been up to Lockport. So we're trying to move that around so we can get a lot more ladies involved. Um, we also have our Tri-City uh, tournament, which is us in Lockport and Niagara Falls. So we try to get as many men, you know, to be able to come out for that. And also this year, where um, I'm sure Jim has probably talked about it, we have our golf outing, which is between the Tonawandas, Greater Buffalo, and the bowling proprietors. And that's all a fundraiser for our kids. Again, another scholarship opportunities for the kids to uh, be able to earn some money for college. The action will continue on Beat the Champ in just a minute. Welcome back to Beat the Champ. All right, I mean, in the days when we just carried a one ball and a spare ball, and that was it. Right. At one time, you'd manipulate hand position right. or, you know, your eyes out in the lane, which you still can to some degree, but manipulating your hand position doesn't even really, yeah, it's you, not really a factor anymore unless you don't have a ball that matches up and you just try to keep it simple. So true. So but true. technology has played its part in this sport as well. Definitely. Saw so a lot of wobble on that pin from John. He really needed that too. Yeah, on that four pin, couldn't get it, so it's a spare, and that continues to keep him chasing Andy Reddick, who got off to that great start of six consecutive strikes, and then a spare in the seventh, but uh, Andy's got a position here and a chance to kind of put this one away. Yeah, he's got a 30 pin advantage. John was trying to knock that down, and. That lane five again. 
good cheering section on hand for Andy Reddick. His dad, his stepmom, his daughter Madison, uh, and his daughter Reynolds are here. And he's got uh, friends from the, the Woodlake family here as well cheering him on too. So a good turnout for Andy Reddick here. Good cheering section at Manor Lanes too. And Andy has made them proud with an impressive performance here as he tries to end the three-match winning streak of John Massiello. <laughs> Continues to throw a terrific ball here. Well, that pretty much secures the match for him. Um, John can mathematically only get to 239. And Andy's put himself in a real real good position here. So the nice little run for John Massiello may be coming to an end. And it's been good to see John because, uh, you know, we've seen him in bits and pieces, spurts here through the first year or so, beat the champ. And he's had a little bit of success, but maybe not. And again, that wobbling pin that for pin John moved. is, is well, we've seen that a couple of times here already. Yeah, he's, he has had a little bit of sliding on the pins. Yeah. He had a, a 10 pin slide over earlier in another match. But yeah, that's gonna do it for Andy Reddick here to uh, move on. So a shake of the hands from John Massiello to Andy Reddick as we reset the pins here. But uh, boy, th th that's gotta be one of the more frustrating things is when you see that pin oh, bouncing see, yes. around and wobbling, as you mentioned, Karen, sliding like yeah. that. Like what more do you need to do? Yeah, you feel like you throw the kitchen sink at it. And nothing's gonna <laughs> knock it down. How's your, uh, how's your game these days? Not what I used to be, but I'm still out there. Well, that's because you're a big you're a big shot now. You gotta you gotta make sure it's good for everybody else first, right? That's true. I'm out there usually helping out with any tournament, or I was here with Jim helping him out with the uh, the beat the champ qualifier here. So I'm usually around helping wherever I can. Well, good. Thank you for helping us out with that uh, and being a part of it as well too. As uh, have you two guys had a chance to uh, bowl against each other oh, yes. uh, recently? Not recently, Not, but we have. We've been but on we leagues, have. leagues together. Good. Then again, there isn't anybody in Western North that you haven't bowled against. I think that's pretty accurate for me to say, right, sir? <laughs> I've gotten around. So John will finish things out here in the 10th frame. And a good, strong way to finish. But it's going to be a win for Andy Reddig, and that means Andy is going to get his second weekly win here on Beat the Champ, and he is gonna come back for next week's show where we've got another good lineup of bowlers ready to challenge him, two brand new Beat the Champ bowlers, and then uh, in Jeremy Zimmerman, a bowler that we've seen a couple times already, so uh, opportunity for Andy Redding to go on a little bit of a roll, and that will come in next week's show, but we need to wrap things up here first, and. What a great run we've had already here at Manor Lanes 2. It started with the perfect game from Mike D'Amico and then some great bowling and Massiello was three game winning streak has been a nice middle chunk of all this and uh, then we'll get to see some new names for next week. Right, and all in all, no matter what, the scores have been high. I mean, even our losing scores have been very significant numbers. So we've seen yes. some great scoring here. Oh. Yes, there, there's no question about it that uh, this place has been conducive to good scoring because that is what we have seen throughout uh, our first two weeks here at Manor Lanes 2. So Andy Reddig will slide over after the 226 is put up by John Massiello and Andy will finish things out here in the 10th frame. Karen, thank you for joining us. Thanks for giving us a little bit of insight on what all the good work that's going on with the Tonawanda USBC. Keep up the good thank work, you. and you are always welcome to come hang out with us here <laughs> on Beat the Champ. Well, I'll probably be around I, somewhere doing I know, I know stores, we'll so. be at the Tonawanda Bowling Center, I think, at some <laughs> point here in the next couple of months, so we'll we'll be in your neck of the woods in the Tonawandas pretty soon. I'll be here. And I'll see Karen at the state tournament, because we've also got many events to bowl. Of course. Yes, yes yeah. and I'm actually bowling this coming weekend, so well, great. I'll give it well, my good, shot. Good Good luck to you. Karen Bariza from the Tonawanda's USBC. Uh, thank you. We thank her for joining us here as Andy Reddick continues to pile up the strikes and he's going to put a very impressive score on the board here.
A 278 is the score for Andy Reddick. A very impressive performance. Nice uh, moment there between he and John Massiello. So when we come back to wrap up week two at Manor Lanes 2, we'll talk to John, we'll talk to Andy, we'll get you ready for our bowlers for next week. When Sue and I return, you're watching Beat the Champ at Manor Lanes 2. It was a nice little run here for John Massiel. It's good to see you sticking around on the show a little bit. Tell me how you felt like you bowled. Pretty good. And then, uh, well, this last game, Andy could have had 300 himself, so there's no shame in losing to that. So overall, it was a great experience and we had a lot of fun. And I'd like to thank all the proprietors that put all the time and work into it. Well, great. And that's an excellent message to pass on, including especially one of me, those right? proprietors, especially this especially guy. Especially me, because well, I've got money. the money. Yeah. <laughs> Johnny, congratulations. And we'll see you again next month, probably. Oh, we'll, we'll be there. All right. Our winner today and the winner of the final match, Andy Reddick with Sue. Well, you know you were taking on a great experience with John Massiello, and you bowled a great match. What were you thinking today going in? I was just trying to worry about what I was doing. And uh, John's always a great competitor, great guy. and. Uh, but I, I got lucky today to get the better of him. Oh, you made a lot of great shots <laughs> out there. And we hope to see a lot more great shots coming next week. But congratulations on your win. Thanks. Going to try. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, Andy will try to keep a little of that luck and save. Hopefully he saved a little of it because we're going to get him back next week. So we'll see Andy next week with three more bowlers. Sue and I and Janelle will come back to wrap up week two. Stay here at Manor Lanes 2. Beat the Champ is back in a moment. Well, two weeks down and two more still to come here at Manor Lanes 2 in Amherst. And I think the one thing that jumps out at you, Sue, is high scores. We had a 300 in our first match. We just had a 278 in our last match. Yeah, no knock on wood lanes, right? Who needs synthetics? These scores are massive. But we almost had two 300s in one in one bowling center. How great is that? Yeah, I mean, and the bowlers have been outstanding. Those near 300s and 300s are making your life much easier, I aren't know. they? I, I always say, Lots of strikes for me, make it easy. And hey, these guys are delivering for me, so well, I'm not complaining. See, they're all trying to make everything easier for Janelle and all the rest <laughs> of us. So we get Andy Reddick back with three more bowlers to challenge him next week. So make sure you're there to see if the high scores continue. We thank you for watching Beat the Champ.